Welcome back to the Hearthstone Wild Open. I'm Robert Wing, once again joined on the desk by Nathan. That's Admirable Samora. We just witnessed a great series. Didn't know much about Jinja Ninja coming into this, but was very impressed by what we saw from him. Very, very impressive play, I have to say. A lot yeah. of proficiency across the board, uh, hedging the bets at the right time, I think, and just solid decks. That's, uh, that's a big part of winning Hearthstone is just bringing the right decks. And choosing Molten Reflection early on, apparently. But yeah. Uh, very excited to see what he does against Control. Let's go ahead and take a look at who has qualified thus far for the Hearthstone Wild Live Finals that will be taking place in July. Uh, from China, it's Shenhai Yuyi, SH Royal Baze. From Europe, it's General and Alb 987. From Americas, we have McNuggets. And now it is either going to be Control or Jinja Ninja. That's right. We'll have six of those players qualified after this match is done. So this is the do or die match for Control. His last one, it was an opportunity, but a bit of a freebie coming up to this point. But now, one shot left. Yeah, very excited uh, again to see what these two players do. They they both come in here uh, with the approach of, we can do better. You know, that's, that's very important as a competitor in anything. It, Hearthstone's no exception. You have to look at a loss and you have to say, okay, how do we do better? And Jinja Ninja did win his prior series, but it already lost to Control. So this is that rematch. That's the chance for Jinja Ninja to, to get a little bit of redemption and for Control to go ahead and say, you know what? I am someone who, who lives wild. That's what I do. I am a wild specialist. I'm going to the finals. Yeah, and I think this is the more of the matchup that uh, Control was was expecting to see with, uh, with more of the traditional Freeze Mage style of deck. It, it can be a little bit weaker versus aggressive decks, more powerful uh, versus other Control decks due to its burst. But certainly a matchup that both players are looking forward to, and Shaman continues to draw the bands. I mean, that was something that we didn't see on Jinja Ninja lineup last time. Is he had Shaman available to him, and it, it made swift work of Silent Storm. Well, neither player will have their snowmans available to them. Those have been banned out, so uh, no aggro snowman this time, sorry. That's right. You hate to see that. I actually don't. Well, if, if you don't like Totem Golem, which I don't like Totem Golem either, but. It's still, the, the pain of Totem Golem is still too near. <laughs> too soon. I still have the memories of George C. last uh, Europe Spring Championship that's just <laughs> cornering me by the pool going, making the totem wolf noise. Rrr. Yeah, you do it way better than I do. Sometimes you just got to be a real gamer. <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, as we said, going to be an exciting one, a chance for Ginger Ninja to go ahead and get revenge for Control. The name of the game is just, uh, yeah, you won the series in the past. You can't look at it that way, though. You just got to win again. That's right. And we're opening up with a Pirate Warrior mirror match. Mm. And this this match, a lot of times you look at this and go, ah, it's, it's outright aggression. This one's going to end quick. It's not always the case. A lot of times the, the final threat on board is what's going to win a player of the game. So a lot of positional movement comes into play here. And what I mean by that is you'll see players use resources simply for defensive measures at times uh, in order to get more value out of them. So you can pay you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 life just clearing out minions and making sure that you're getting the favorable traits. And at the end of the day, the armor up can actually make a big difference in that spot. In this mirror in general, there's a very thin margin for error. You you really have to come in there and make the correct moves at the correct times, play around the, the threats as they are in hand. You have to make some guesstimations or else you get heavily punished. Upgrade generally not something you, you want to play independent, uh, but the way it works out here is, yeah, he goes into his two. He has a pirate that is now a 3-3 three, three, as opposed to just a 2-3. If the pirate should stick, he has a blood cell cultist. We know it's probably not going to, but... Uh, this is kind of the, the end of the stage of ground turns and where people have to start making some actual difficult decisions. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it's it's even interesting with early turns like that. I'm, I'm not quite convinced Jinja Ninja should have played Nizos first mate that early. It, there's a lot of room to work with when he's got two copies of Fiery War Axe, when he's got South Sea Captain in the hand. You know, say, he, say he'd simply saved those. Sure, he'd be staring down a 1-1 this turn. He would have cleared out the opposing Blood Cell Cultists, but then you'd be looking at possibility for uh, South Sea Captain here coin into South Sea Deckhand and blast away with the patches, kill this guy. It, it's just a lot of little weird things. Uh, and it's 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 difficult to say that one thing was better than something else, but there's just a lot more to think about than people give it credit for. Yeah, and, and to your point, there's just flexibility in how you navigate the turns. It, Yeah, if you're just kind of in a situation where you're, you're at work and you're half paying attention, you're just grinding some ladder, like I guess you, you all tab out, make a turn, yeah, just go there. But at this setting, there there are different ways to play that yield different results. Yeah, like say you're at your broken you printer and <laughs> somebody walks in while you're James Pirate Warrior. You probably just need to play on curve at that point. Rob gets it. <laughs> All right, well, the Spellbreaker just going to come out, make that uh, Frothing Berserker a little bit more manageable. And like Ninja control. Ninja. Control continues to be frustrated when, yeah. he, when he's seeing these outcomes. Ginger Ninja, on the other hand, just playing incredibly quickly in this one. And I mean, I, I hey, I read the chat too. Sometimes people are like, ah, oh, Pirate Warrior brain dead aggro deck, blah, blah, blah. But that's not true. There's always merit to exploring the options for a little longer. Always. 
There always is. All right, well. If you're feeling it, you're feeling it, though. You know, don't disrupt the flow of your game. If you're playing really well, you, yeah. you should play within that comfort. I think that's something that's often overlooked. Do you think when Jordan was feeling it, he ever passed the ball? <laughs> no. He just pulled up after yeah. dribbled to the half court line, just pull up at the key. Yeah, just sports go. ball. Yeah. Slam dunk the football. Oh, you the watch basketball. Hole. A lot. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, there is some play here for the ship's cannon and the South Sea captain, but this is one of those rare circumstances where the two damage bolt from the ship's cannon is actually fairly low impact. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little bit curious about the just the captain launch here in general, too. We just got a sacrifice that says he doesn't want to take this much damage. This could be necessary, I and mean, the damage is definitely piling up, and that's the benefit of having the second fiery war axe. Uh, for Jinja Ninja. It's, it's been so much ability to keep control from developing at all. And when, when that's the case, it means that every single threat Jinja Ninja played needs to be checked in some way or another. So the resources for control have been fairly limited here early on. And while the life totals are starting to dwindle, Jinja Ninja has that one extra resource, plus the Leroy in hand for control. That's a card that is a great finisher, but is not something that is uh, always strong in these matchups. One interesting point is in wild, since you have Death Spite, obviously when the Death Spite is broken, it deals one damage to the entirety of the board. You can sometimes line up turns where you play the Leroy Swing, get rid of the, the Whelplings that are generated, but uh, obviously this kind of far and few between, and Control is a Death Spite at one durability short of, of considering that. Yeah, Control uh, starting to talk to himself as well. It's, it's another like comfort thing a lot of players do, right? myself included. When I'm, when I'm isolated in, in my own room and I'm, I'm playing in high pressure situations, oftentimes I'll vocalize. Uh, thoughts to myself just to help me give that clarity understanding and while he has to take fire blast here to clear off this falling berserker oftentimes uh, the silver hand is, is a superior hero power in this in this situation just being able to get a no one one and then another one one and then another one one uh, so sometimes weapons don't interact very well with that so it's a, it's a double attack here both the death spite and the fact that he needs a damage immediately you can see how dire this situation realistically is for control when he's willing to just play out the ship's cannon yeah he doesn't even do pirates but there's a good chance he draws some more in the near future out of his deck but he's just saying okay i just need the death spite to be swung into something else man he's his eyes rolling he's not feeling good about this one and rightfully so. I mean, he's facing down a heap of trouble. Not a bad draw. Not a bad draw, but not... Not the draw he needs. He's drawing things to check some of the threats, but he's not really getting anywhere. Yeah. He's this just kind of paddling at this point. Also, just this hero power here does set up fairly nicely for uh, the Saucy Captain to be killed by the Dust Bite. Scratch that. <laughs> uh, nah, not when you trust the Pirate's Code, man. Yeah, and Ginger Ninja has... He has everything at his fingertips. He doesn't have to do a thing. Some say that if you trust the Pirates code enough, you can even avoid death. Oof. Yeah. There's, again, Pirates 1 was pretty much all about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's looking like game. Here, uh, armor up's gone. No way to check this board. Have to expend Leroy as a defensive measure. That's a losing situation. Ginger Ninja quit game one. Ginger Ninja definitely had the tools early on and, and leveraged them in a manner that uh, while I would like to at least go back and explore like turns one through three from Jinja Ninja, he leveraged them in a, in a way that was good enough to win the game. Control definitely had kind of some, some awkward turns early on in terms of how he leverages resources. Uh, went ahead and traded early on the patches. Now, trading that patches meant that he was able to kill Jinja Ninja's patches, but it also took the second pirate off the board. If that had lived, then the Blood Sail Cultist could have potentially generated him value on the, the upgraded weapon. So right. a lot of weird points of intersection where you could say like, well, it could have done this differently. Patches is probably going to trade into yours anyway. Maybe you just want to get the damage. So uh, it's actually a much more meticulous matchup than I think most people give it credit for. A lot of times you look at, at matchups and, and so many of them are decided by overall game plan. What, what cards have you brought specifically for situations and how could you use them for that? For pirates, it's so much more about the little tiny interactions that take place piece by piece. Shh, shh, shh. Nathan. I think I hear a wild pirate warrior list. Ah, there it is. All right, Nathan. Biggest card here, it's Ship's Cannon, but why? Ship's Cannon is just fantastic. Every time you play a pirate, this launches two damage somewhere on the enemy side of the board. Uh, you know, we talked a lot about how this deck can play uh, a different dynamic. It doesn't have to necessarily hit the ground running. Pirate Warrior, uh, I think a good way to describe it is uh, a control deck that turns the corner very quickly and doesn't have a lot of late game potential. It tries to bring its late game more to like the turn four, turn five range. So it's landing those super powerful threats and taking control early on. And all of its tools are just simply <laughs> so flexible. You look really pretty like this. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, all of its tools are simply so flexible that you have the option of using them offensively or defensively most of the time.
Yeah, you know, Ships Cannon, to me, the evolution of Ships Cannon is kind of interesting because, you know, back in the day, Ships Cannon was so bad, it didn't even it didn't even see play, it didn't even get to the bench. Ships Cannon was just, like, not even welcome in the venue. Like, people were saying, like, I'm sorry, man, you gotta be at least 15 to get in here, and Ships Cannon's like, please, I'm a real card, I promise. And now, like, it's just, Ships Cannon's out there, and you just don't go out when the sun's down, because Ships Cannon's gonna get you. Yeah. Yeah. It's Ships quick. Cannon gonna give it to you. Why wait? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Forget waiting for you to get it on your own. <laughs> Ship's Cannon going to deliver it to you. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, Ship's Cannon, though, obviously seeing all kinds of new power in the Wild format. But that, yeah. that speaks to a lot of cards in Wild that they never really saw their peak. Unfortunately, Trogzor, not one of them. Well, I mean, he's got to compete with Dr. Boom. Even even in the afterlife, even in Card uh, Valhalla. He's, he's, he's kind of just got to compete with Reno Jackson in general. Like, what, yeah. would you rather have uh, some three fives in your opponent cast spells, or would you rather, I don't know, go to 30? Probably go to 30. Well, ships can it fare as well in a lot of situations, but how does it fare against Priest? We're going to find out in this next match. Yeah, it, and this could be a tough matchup, but the really critical thing to note is the presence of Spellbreaker yep. that we've seen from Control, as well as uh, just, just the weapons in general. Weapons are so efficient versus Priest, and right now we're seeing few weapon destruction cards actually used uh, in Priests that are not dedicated specifically to defensive measures. So a Gluttonous Ooze can appear here and there, but for the most part, Despite's just going to get full value. Right, and that's actually a major difference between Wild and Standard right now. Standard is just weapon destruction all over the place. Oh, yeah. Uh, because you just absolutely have to have it. Medivh just runs you over if you don't have it. Pirate Warrior, obviously incredibly powerful. So Wild, though, less so, unless you're, you're playing the Reno decks that have a lot of room for deck cards. Yeah, th that's the whole basis of the, of the Reno Jackson decks, too, is to have the right tool for the right situation. Uh, oftentimes for... Uh, Jinja Ninja and, and his priest deck that he's brought, it's simply about having things to stand in the way. Uh, you know, enough defensive cards can get the job done. But we saw this similar situation last time where Deathlord uh, found a Korkron Elite on the other side of the board. That is a tough pill to swallow. And Jinja Ninja with a couple of Death Lords early, but no turn two action, he's going to be under the gun quickly. Well, Plus that for Ginger Ninja, since Control's already drawn one core Chrono Elite, statistically it's less likely that a Death Lord would do just that same thing. The double Death Lord is very promising as the game goes on, but yeah, for these first few turns against the Pirate Warrior, you're certainly looking at uh, this being a little bit slow. That said, Control's opening hand is much more slated to turn three and four. So Ginger Ninja kind of getting a little bit of a pass here, at least for now. Yeah, and, and this is going to be an interesting turn coming up uh, for Control. He chose not to get the Dread Corsair online, which I'm honestly a little bit surprised by. If you had Dread Corsair out, the Heroic Strike would have coupled to actually take out a Death Lord in this spot. And you do know Death Lord is in there. You have played Jinja Ninja oh, at yeah. this point. <laughs> that adequately describes my feelings as well. That describes my feelings a lot of the time when I'm playing Hearthstone. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> yep, and here we go. This is a big one. South Sea Captain would be a big pull. Bloodsail Raider, not so much, but... Uh, a body that will survive an attack into a Death Lord is, is an important thing. So now Control is going to be on the Death Spite plan. So Frothing Berserker, whoa, I was just about to talk about how scary this card could potentially be. The Death Spite uh, whirlwinding all the minions on board on Death Rattle means that Frothing Berserker can get to out of control limits at times. So you notice Control is just full pressuring this as hard as he can. This plays around Potion of Madness a little bit. It also helps him to uh, just keep a card like Divine Spirit from being a big impact in these situations. So Jinja Ninja fighting for Control to stabilize this Death Lord while con Control is just simply trying to push this down as quickly as possible so we can start getting through. Now, the style of Priest definitely has a deep bag of tricks, but the reality is a lot of those tricks are kind of cute and they're fancy bells and whistles but sometimes they don't do what you actually need them to do, which is kill a giant frothing berserker, uh, which I get the feeling Jinja Ninja is going to be staring down relatively quickly. Yeah, well, the Light of the Naru and the Circle Healings make a big impact here, though. That's going to give Jinja Ninja a, an extra minion on board. Allows him to take out a minion here. He can set this Death Lord back to full, and the fact it's got four power means the health on opposing minion just doesn't matter. And it doesn't look like he's going to use a Light of Naru here. He just says, you know what? This is enough. This is my champion. He will lead me to victory. And Control is, is likely to just have to dump into this. If he leaves this minion on board too long, it, it is not going to end well for him. He'll lose every single minion he plays if he doesn't kill this. This is super unfortunate, too, because it was. It looks like if he just wanted to clear right now, it would have to be upgrade on the Despite. It would have to be the Corcron, and then this Buccaneer as well. You are literally just throwing everything into it and then hoping you get something big off of it. 
Shifson's chair. Didn't need the upgrade, but did want to preserve the Despite on board. Yeah. That Acolyte of Pain is going to be awfully big. Those extra card draws mean so much at this stage, too. And this is really uh, an illustration of why Deathlord is in this deck. It just grinds your opponent's resources down as far as you can. The Cult is pretty big here. It, it is. Don't mean to interrupt, but the Cultus is it just suddenly jams out. It's like pretty much that is exactly what I wanted. Yeah, no, it really is. I mean, this is this is a disaster for Jinja Ninja at this point. You know, he, he relied on this particular turn to reset the board and gain control. Yeah, enter fire again. That that file that under cool things that might be useful later. Yeah, maybe now it can reduce the damage of the the frothing berserker. No, sorry, that's frothing berserker. But uh, maybe later it does something. You gotta hope this powered shield delivers, though. It, it's gonna need to deliver big. That frothing berserker is gonna be scary. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Well, now you can reduce the the power of the. Frothing Berserker, if you so choose to. But this, this again, is just like, what a crappy use of these tools. Yeah, it's not very strong. You just load up the board <laughs> and, and hope that this is enough. And so the debate now begins. Heal the Talon Priest or heal yourself. You know, is that two life ever going to be relevant down the road? Oh, my. I mean, this Frothing Berserker, regardless of what happens on this turn, is going to hit for a lot of damage on this particular turn. So, I mean, what's the most he could deal here? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, plus 7? So he could deal 21 damage this turn. Now, I don't think it's the most efficient use of his tools. This is kind of the weird spot. Yes, he can do a lot of damage on this turn, but the, the board is wide and above one health. So how are you actually looking at getting rid of it? So that's a great question, Rob. That is a great question. And you can see Control starting to piece this together and go, I, I can't kill this whole board. I can't defend my Frothing Berserker well enough. The The benefit that Control has going for him is the hand strength. Jinja Ninja's hand is, is way weaker than Control's Potentially. Right now. Potentially. Right. Uh, he doesn't know that, of course. Right. Uh, and, and that's why this turn's such a struggle. If he could see Jinja Ninja's hand, this, this turn would be a piece of cake. Are you going to go ahead and get the buff? And, Whoa. Ooh, okay, it looks like he's just going for it. Hang on a second here. Did he go all face? I think I saw the cultist dragged face. If he went all face, wait a minute. The, the Light of the Naru token is at three right now. It would get plus 14 power from Circle of Healing. That's 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24. And then he could heal himself, 25, 26. That's lethal. That's lethal damage! Oh, and Control realizes that you see his reaction. Wow. Was he, do you wonder, was he aware of that? I, I don't think he, I don't think he was. He'd already seen one circle of healing. It's hard to, to give credit for the second one there, but that is a major turnaround, Jinja Ninja. Quick 2-0 lead. Who's the aggro deck now? Yeah. Well, look at him. He's the aggro deck. I thought Frothing Berserker was going to be the, the big minion that game. It was... He he had to trade. He, he had to make trades there if he wanted to play around that. And the obvious trade is, look, don't leave the Light Warden up. Wow. Yeah, I mean, even if he kills two minions in that spot, that situation doesn't pan out the same way. Just an extra power. He went all in. He went all in. And then the crazy thing is, you realize your entire board's going to be traded. But you have the Death Spite in hand. You're thinking, okay, I just cinched this up over one to two turns. That's how I'm going to win this. But did not play around these. Wow, that actually looks terrible. Never mind. Um, <laughs> I regret what, that gag. Was it the hat that makes that happen? Or, hey, or is I'm it me? I'm a good me? looking guy. Or is it me? No, it's. Thanks, Rob. You're a good looking guy. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, but figuring, okay, I can just cinch this up. But at least taking out the Light Warden would have taken out the, the way you die. So I. Definitely think no matter how you slice that. Well, the I, Light Warden had to go, and then maybe you don't trade beyond that, but. I, I don't even mind him playing for the Light Warden not having a big buff there. Again, he's seen a circle of healing at this point. There's two cards on the opposite side. The the big things to worry about are circle of healing and shadow vision. That, outside of that, that's it. He's already seen a shadow visions to that point. He saw the card played from shadow visions. 
But don't you think healing. you're generating enough damage over the the coming turns to where just putting the yeah putting a minion into the light warden? Let's go ahead and see the frothing berserker set up again. The frothing berserker had kind of been brewing for a few turns, and it was more a question of when do we pop this off? You know, the other question here too is should he even be attacking the acolyte in this spot? If if he attacks the three four in this spot, he ends up with uh, the frothing berserker three three and three four versus one six. And the 1-6 in this spot would, would have seen inner fire, but it eventually led to this board state where Control went all in, and Jinja Ninja, he, he spotted that quite immediately and just started counting as soon as it went to his turn. Just double-checked everything. No, I, I, like, I like getting rid of that Acolyte pain, honestly. Like, I think that was important. I, I think it's important, too, but... There's, it, I just want to illustrate how many different things could have happened right. in this game and how, yeah. how much the decisions legitimately impacted the outcome of this one, even though everything else looks pretty straightforward. Yeah, Jinja Ninja has spotted some some pretty impressive lethals there. We, we saw in the last series of that Freeze Mage game with the Molten Reflection going for those Ice Lances. So, uh, again, Jinja Ninja just kind of putting on a show yeah. in the America's portion of the Hearthstone Wild Open. That's something else I think about, just uh, the format in general, too. How many weird combinations of cards can produce a, a lot of damage that we haven't found yet yeah. in this format. All right, well, the next match is going to be Warrior versus Mage. This is going to be it if Jinja Ninja wins. He yeah. advances along with McNuggets, and, and that's the end of Control Story, at least for this open. Now, this is the one deck from Jinja Ninja's side that I was worried about, was the traditional Freeze Mage. Uh, not really much in Control's lineup that is slow and allows him to build towards those giant evolved Kobold turns. They can still happen, but every single one of Control's deck is designed to get to a critical point in the game and then unleash massive damage. Uh, that said, I do think the Aggro Druid being a little more board-centric, there, there's certainly more room, but I agree, in general, this is going to be a really rough matchup, Pirate Warrior versus Traditional Freeze Mage. The, it, the Primordial Glyph's probably going to have to come up big. It, a lot of things have to come up big in this one, too. Even Doomsayer, as important of a card as it is, isn't necessarily the prime card that, that can be the end-all, be-all. Control oftentimes will have ways to check it, an early Doomsayer. Uh, so as we get on the ground running, Jinja Ninja is going to have to figure out how to offset this early pressure. Well, drawing uh, two fireballs in the early game is certainly not it. It's not it. Uh, that That's definitely a liability. Paying four mana to answer you know, two or three mana from your opponent is not a very strong deal. So he has to decide early on how quickly does he need to get on board and start counter-pressuring. Because if he's not able to mop up these minions, that means that Southsea Captain is a bigger impact. It means that Bloodsail Cultist is always going to be active. And then just turn after turn, he's going to get chipped away at. So when he coins his hero power early on, I think this is wise from Jinja Ninja. Yeah. He's hoping that there's no turn two pirate from Control, and maybe he can see something as a result. So we did see Control play the Nazas first mate on turn one. We've talked a lot about the, the combo potential with Ships Cannon. In this particular matchup, would you have liked to have seen the first mate held, or did you think it was fine to just play it on one? I think I like him using it the way he did. In, in this matchup, if he sees Coin early on, it gives him a large tempo lead, especially if he can land the Ships Cannon. If there's no Frostbolt and Frostbolt exactly, it means that that's going to produce more damage. Oh, this is just an abysmal situation. Yeah. For Jinja Ninja. They, the ship's cannon is going to be unchecked. More pirates are probably going to come down. We do see the Death Bite, which will also bring out the Corsair. And uh, <laughs> let's just hit the mage in the face. Yeah, this is a big turn. Uh, Jinja Ninja setting the ice block first was important so he can have the Medivh's Valet. But I, I'm fearing this is just not going to be nearly enough. He's already down to 11. Uh, there's Spell Break on the other side. Frostbolt, a very nice pickup, though. So that could be the, the start of a turnaround. If he can manage to stay safe for just a couple turns. It's more like... Uh, it's more than a couple turns. Yeah. It's it's like five turns, and even then, it's probably... It's a tall order. Yeah, Ice, Ice Barrier can do a good job at that, though. And I think wise to take out the Dread Corsair here uh, in the face of this. It's very likely Control is low on Pirates at this point, and the Medivh's Valet is standing in the way to potentially absorb that damage. He doesn't care if it's going to attack or not. He, just, he wants to go one place and one place only. Absorbs the damage, so block is preserved. Okay. That's a big deal. That is, okay. Well, the Spellbreaker, this is one of the lesser uses here if the Frost Nova comes out. The Spellbreaker can actually just deal with the effects of the Frost Nova, allowing the block to be popped. So want to point that out really quickly as Jinja Ninja is going into this turn because he should know a Spellbreaker is in this deck. Yeah, an Ice Barrier the play. So Jinja Ninja, if he sees a pirate from control side, that could be a little bit troubling. Outside of that, he is poised to uh, have his block preserved on this turn. Uh, now, Hunter Hero Power wow. does pop the block. Fire Blast will do okay. it. Okay. Nope. That's, uh, that's not it. Life but it hell. represents a whole other can of worms. That's a pirate. Yep. So Control is going to set Ginger Ninja to one. 
and pop that block. So this is still a big threat to Jinja Ninja. He can shut off the board pressure, but turn after turn after turn, Control's going to draw two cards and start attacking. So he's got three turns until he gets the Alex Strauza, and he needs to wipe the board before he plays Alex Strauza. Maybe if he could fully turn off the board pressure for the next like three to four turns. Yeah. But he can only he can even only do it for one turn. You have the Spellbreaker uh, on the side of Control, which means you're you're turning off the board pressure, but you're also kind of not. Yeah. In essence, Pir pirate is the big draw here. If Ginger Ninja doesn't kill the ship scan, and otherwise the ice barrier will uh, preserve his life for just that little bit longer. Yeah, and again, this is kind of playing the game out because you're you're in a setting where you want to win, but uh, wouldn't be surprised to Ooh, yeah, just I, see this. I like this. Just sack the yep. Just sack the potential there. So control needs five damage to end the game in this scenario. That's actually fairly tough. All right. Well, this is not going to be it. Now, Spellbreaker has been in the hand of control for a while, so Jinja Ninja, no doubt, kind of uh, able to narrow down the list of what cards that could be. Yeah, I'm curious if Spellbreaker is what comes to your head, though. That's a, that's a difficult call to make. Leroy. Yeah, uh, it depends. We didn't see the last time they played, so it's possible the Spellbreaker was never something that came up. Yeah. And here, uh, a Freeze won't be good enough. It has to be Freeze Plus. Because the Spellbreaker plus the upgrade would deal his final points of damage. So Jinja Ninja has to find a way to protect himself. And, and the step number one of that is understanding that that's what he has to do. Yeah, it's still two turns out from Alex Straza, so yeah, I, I, valiant I, defense here from Jinja Ninja. But this this one was just always going to happen. I, I like this play from him, try to, to generate the extra card draw, but the silence on the minion here is the nail in the coffee. <laughs> Whoa! Control! All right, that is... He missed... He missed it. That is a, that is a big blunder. And now Jinja Ninja has an opportunity to draw out of this. Well, it begins with Arcane Intellect to see what we go into. Arcane Intellect, now you get Ice Block. Oh, oh. Okay, so Ice Block puts you to, to two mana. You can't really clear up too much of the board, so you're kind of getting in that situation where Alex Straza actually doesn't matter. There's so much damage on board is the thing. Yeah. So he's he needs to find a way to protect himself, and he needs to find a board clear. So it's still a very tall order, and he's going to be facing down two Frothing Berserkers, likely to top that off. Uh, and look, Control's been under a lot of pressure. I'm not I'm not justifying why you miss that, because you're you're giving the mage more chances to to win uh, or draw out of the situation. But uh, he, he certainly had a long day. Oh yeah. It's, it's been a very long time. And you, you've seen it on his face. This, is, this has been a very emotionally taxing for him. And that's the thing. is just it's one moment's lapse in judgment can cost you in situations like this. It can cost you big. Blizzard gets drawn. He needs one Blizzard and Barrier. If he has a second himself. Barrier. Frostbolt would, would, would stop it. Ice Lance will stop it for a turn. Okay. Uh, something would charge. Would still Would still do it. I'm just struggling to see how he gets out of the game still yeah. is the problem is the problem I'm having. If this had been Barrier, if he's running a second copy, then he would have been in decent shape. Can you go ahead and ping here, get rid of the Finley. <laughs> we'll just wait for Frothings. It's fine. Primordial Glyph. Are we camping, Nathan? Because this game is intense. I get it. <laughs> I feel zero shame. Sorry, Chet. I, 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 on the other hand, feel your shame. So As long as I don't have to feel it. Okay. All right, well, that's going to do it. Control misses the lethal on the turn eight, but finds it there with the Corcron. But both times uh, that we've seen... Uh, or all, rather, all the times that we've seen Lethal Mist, it, it has not been punishing to the player due to the lead that they have generated by that point. The matchups are, are very favorable for them, and they're getting massively favorable spots. But those are opportunities that you cannot afford to miss, because when the times come closer, that's when it matters the most. And that's really when, when we as casters talk about missing uh, opportunities to win the game, it's not because we, we enjoy ever you know saying, like, oh, well, they should have done better. It's just the reality is there are going to come situations where you have to be able to see that one-off lethal that, that actually just gets you the game, because some situations you're not just going to be so far ahead where a cork run wins the game for you. Right. It, it creates a, a very tense situation sure. where you can look back to that moment. If things turned around, you go, oh, that was the spot. That was why. Literally that one right there. You know, it's I, I'm not here to try to put anyone down. That's ridiculous to yeah, think yeah. that.
Yep. Which is important to do our due diligence as casters here. Let's go ahead and take a look, though, at that match. There were some moments that were a little bit tense. We saw Jinja Ninja really have a difficult time getting foothold in the beginning of this match. Yeah, and, and that's largely in part because of the tools he drew. If those fire, fireballs had been Frostbolt instead, much better position for him. But it was just turn after turn, the, the pressure that was provided from control. And in this matchup, it's certainly one where he is free to to do the opposite of what we talked about in the in the first game that we saw, where it, sometimes it's meticulous uh, use of your cards. In this one, it is much less subtle. It's pedal to the metal and, and get there. I mean, Jinja Ninja was essentially living on borrowed time for like the last five turns of that game. Yes. And he, and he was just making it work. He was continuing to take his time, figure out, okay, what do I lose to? What do I lose to? What can I play around? We see there the Spellbreaker. Again, if that had been used on one of the frozen minions there, would have been enough to close out the game. Instead, Control Tunnel Visioned in a little bit on the fact that you don't want Acolyte drawing cards and... Yeah. It's a, it's a good instinct from him, but you know, important to count your damage and, and remember those small interactions. Uh, little things like that make a big difference, and it's part of the reason why experience is so important. Yeah, it, it, you know, some people talk about that they like to go into the matchups where they don't have to actually do a whole lot of thinking because they just want to rely on reflexes, but that's one of those situations where relying on reflexes is actually kind of dangerous. Yeah, how because how often you, does yeah. unfreezing your minion give you No, it's, it's not a hugely relevant thing, generally speaking. You're, yeah. you're way more prone to think about, well, if my opponent draws cards, they could potentially draw an answer that wins them the game. Yeah, so that's, that's a much that's more reflex. common situation. That's muscle memory. Yep. And, and that's a lot of players play that way too, and myself included at times. I I play a lot of times by instinct. I just simply look at the board, yep. look at my cards, and the number of games I played tell me I should do thing X, whatever X may be. Uh, a lot of players play that way. They'll tell you that, uh, but some players slow themselves down. Like life coach, for instance, took a lot of time uh, approaching each piece of the board, and even then, at times you could see him struggle to piece something together, play more instinctually, uh, in in on occasion. It's certainly a gear you need to develop. There are going to be situations where you are just trying to maximize time, and you're going to be just trying to go, 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 go. But in a tournament setting uh, where your tournament life is on the line, that's not the setting to rush. No, certainly not. All right, so it is going to be the Freeze Mage versus Controls Priest deck. And this can get tricky uh, for Jinja Ninja. He's got a lot of removal spells, but they're seated in damage. And when that's the case, if Control is able to get one very giant minion on board, it's a lot tougher for Jinja Ninja to deal with. Yeah, because the, this is purely Freeze Mage, so there is no Polymorph. Right. The the big out that they have gotten for that uh, is Primordial Glyph, where sometimes it will access a Polymorph for you. But outside of that, it's it's a pretty tough road for him to get a stable footing where a minion is concerned. Because turn after turn, Control is going to look to just buff it, buff it, and buff it. All right, well, the Radiant Elemental came out there, and Control realizing that Norshire Cleric generally shines in, in situations with minion combat. There's not going to be much of that in the early game. Go ahead and develop the Radiant Elemental. Start building it. It discounts your spell. So I really like that, uh, that much, at least from Control. And, and honestly, this could be much quicker than we think it is. Control drew Divine Spirit, and he's got another Velen's Chosen in his hand. And you see him stressing over the decision to actually kill this Medivh's Valet or go face. I like the face pressure. Yeah. Jinja I mean, Ninja can't kill this. The upside for Jinja Ninja is that if he doesn't necessarily get OTK'd uh, from like 20 down, he has the double Ice Lance there, so he can at least kind of choke out the giant minion for a couple of turns. But beyond that, what, how does he answer something, say, is like a 15 50? Yeah, and I think Control's going to move in here. This is what the deck is designed to do. He's got an almost ideal opening hand to make this happen. And Jinja Ninja, you can see, whew, okay, calm down. We're probably going to lose this one, but yikes. All right, so he has freezes for days. He's got three turns to find a glyph that answers this minion. All right, Control, uh, you know, clearly not happy about that Ice Lance. I can't wait to see how he reacts around the third freeze. Yeah, the other thing, too, is Doomsayer in this spot uh, is a pretty significant pickup, too. If he can freeze and land the Doomsayer, yeah. that's another way out of it. But Control, uh, he's Northshire Cleric. He's got a 20-20 on board. He's going to make up a lot of these resources in the meantime. Northshire Cleric can heal. Draw some more cards. I like this. Just draw a card, see what you get. Maybe you get a Potion of Madness that can help you do uh, some degree. I don't know if the two man damage is going to be specifically relevant, but there are tools you can draw that can help. Zombie Chow. Hmm. I mean, obviously, the downside is that it heals your opponent for five, but you're you're dealing damage in increments of 20 at the moment. Yeah, that, that is not the priority minion yeah. at stake. It, it, obviously, the 20 power one is, but the second one is likely just be the Northshire Cleric, the extra card draw. For control means that even if Jinja Ninja stabilizes this, he can sometimes lose. I mean, what do you think about Frost Nova Ping? I think it's probably his best bet. I mean, I don't want to take 20 and then 
Don't want my opponent to draw cards. I like the Mad Scientist too, though. It helps get a nice block. That's a, you know, another effective reuse in that spot. So Potion Madness here is yeah. a big deal. Actually, it, it, I brought out the Frost Nova, but since you're getting five health anyway, it's not really a situation where you necessarily have to worry about the cards in hand too much. Yeah. Because you're going back up from a six health threshold to an 11 health the, threshold. The major difference I see is just, uh, you know, having a one cost freeze versus a three cost freeze. Yeah. I'm not sure how relevant that is. Well, it's more is getting the mad scientist out. Basically, the way this what? translated, it was the mad scientist worth it. And to so. your point, yeah. I think so. Assuming you get ice block, then yeah, it is uh, very much worth it. Control is he's going to consider just jamming out Wild Power Mancer here. So apply extra pressure. And frankly, I like Death Lord better, I think, here. And Death Lord can maybe get a Doomsayer out of the deck. I think I would hold on Death Lord. Say just disaster struck with fireball attack and then, I don't know, something to stop the attack. I guess the other thing is it protects your, your Light Warden, so you can start building into some kind of auxiliary wind condition that isn't centered around the Radiant Elemental. It's definitely but, true. No, I, I, I mean, I see your point. The, the Death Lord does have some potential downsides, but I don't know. I think I like... Again, just not Light Warden. The, on, the onus is just all on, on Jinja Ninja is, is what it boils down to in this spot. Yeah, that's, a, that's just a dead left. Light Warden now. We have to see what the secret is, if it's Ice Barrier or Ice Block. Yeah, thank right, you so it's Barrier. Much. Which means he's got a Nova. Yep. Yeah, I think we're likely to see the Northshire Cleric bite the dust in this spot. Me, oh. You I like uh, Pyromancer represents more damage. There, there's, I guess, just more hijinks that comes out of it, potentially, but... All right, Death Lord here really doesn't accomplish much. It doesn't. No, I, I don't play it just for the reasons you brought up at this point, which is you're, it's more liability than anything else. Yeah. yeah, you could put Divine Spirit on, and maybe that changes things because the odds of a 16 health minion getting chewed through by the mage are not high. It's pretty tough. Yeah, that that was uh, the point I was going for early on. It's just it's difficult for Jinja Ninja's removal spells to match up uh, strong against what Control has. All right. Well, there could have been a Blizzard. There could have been another Frost Nova potentially. Could have been something, but... You can play down the Mad Scientist and Forgotten Torch it. <laughs> that gets you That gets you a block. Where I'm from, something. we like not dying this turn. It is the only way to not die this turn, but it, it's it's pretty dead. It's pretty dead still. Yeah, Control's early uncontested threat is just massive. Oh, I, I, I'd argue Jinja Ninja contested it with, with freeze after freeze after freeze. It's just not that... That many freezes in the deck. It's like it's like Prince Oberyn, you know. He got yeah, yeah. he got close and then yeah didn't work. Uh, Not that Ginger Ninja did anything that that Oberyn did. Medivh fought bravely. <laughs> Medivh fought nobly, and Medivh died. Yes. Nice sequencing here from Control to draw the extra card as well. If you simply use Circle of Healing first. All right, so you know Control is starting to calm down here. He he is starting to. I don't know, kind of regain his composure a little bit here, make sure he, he's seeing exactly what he needs to do. Only one way left for him to lose, and it's Blizzard Doomsayer, and now he's got Shadow Word Pain for that. Yep. So game five is going to decide once again who's moving on and who's going home. Who's staying home? Who's staying in the room? Yes, I'm sorry, yeah. staying home. <laughs> Wait, how much, how much life steal? 11 plus 6 plus 8? Can that he stay should... alive for another turn? 17 plus the 8 there. The Akanai as well. Yeah. Well, I was looking at Jinja Ninja. I mean, he's the block got popped at 17. So he's at 20... 25? 25? Yeah. Yeah. He's 20, dead. 21, 22, 23, 24, and then the Akanai, yeah. So from his perspective, he could stay alive for another turn. But... Doesn't happen very much when your opponent draws, uh, I don't know, almost their entire deck. And next turn, yeah, sure, play Alex draws and go up to 15 health. How does that work for you? <laughs> Not well. Not well. Still looking nervous despite the, the win. He's calmed down a little bit, but... Yeah, control definitely is striking me as, a, as an emotional player, and there are, there are situations where that can serve you well. Maybe, maybe you know, I, 
honestly, I, I think that just speaks to he's like a MOBA player, like someone who thrives <laughs> under pressure and starts like playing better. But in a card game, your emotion doesn't necessarily translate into to better actual uh, performance in, in that situation. If anything, it just makes you worse. Yeah, oftentimes quite the yeah. reverse. Uh, the thing that I think is, is really putting a lot of pressure on him, though, is how he's touted himself as a wild expert. Sure. This is the major first wild tournament. He's made it to the top four. Now he's one match away, one game away from securing that spot at the live final. I mean, this is what he's he's put his his entire last few months of work into is is this exact spot. That would make me nervous as well. Oh, well, we see with with other players as well. I think Tice back last year in the the opening week of BlizzCon, Tice is, you know, prior to ever becoming a big streamer, marketed himself as a competitive player. He was scrappy. He came up through the King of the Hill series. That's where he really got his his you know personality w w was being a competitor, and then a lot of people cheering for him. There was the packs on the line, and it was something that did get to Tice. And I, I don't think this is anywhere near that volume. Don't get me wrong, but Control is a popular streamer. He's someone out there who, as you said, markets himself as a wild player. So there's a certain mark of pride in this tournament that you know after losing that first series and then going down 0-2, you know suddenly it feels pretty bad. It's, it feels like the weight of the world on your shoulders. It's gonna get to you. Yeah, it definitely will. And and, and I think those are some of, of the best moments that we see. I remember Tice at that one. He was nervous. And he's he's he was yelling to himself between right. games to try to get himself fired up for the match. And then afterwards, come back. Just want to talk to us backstage. It's beautiful to see that. Yeah, and then that, even that game, you know, turn three, he had a 20-20, and it still took him that many turns to actually get the win there. Albeit, Jinja Ninja had the tools to kind of repel him for a while, but that's still, you're like, I've got the lights out combo on three, and this is just taking forever, and in the back of your mind, all the things that can go wrong start to hit you. Yeah, and, and that's the one situation where it's most important to keep your cool. Don't do anything weird, don't just, like, attack an acolyte or something strange when you get the opportunity, just deal him 20. All right, well, it did end up going in his favor. Obviously, the freezes ran out, and Jinja Ninja, Ninja actually expended just a ton of cards to essentially deal with that one Radiant Elemental, which, uh, me. to Control's favor, he kind of drew the starter pack for how you build <laughs> the giant Radiant Elemental. Yes. And we saw him early on just decide, well, well, I'm going for it. We come now to the pivotal Game 5, win in advance, lose and stay home, and it is going to be Freeze Mage versus Aggro Druid now. Freeze Mage traditionally has excelled in situations where it has to deal with board-centric aggressive classes. Does that hold here? I think it does. I think he definitely has an advantage, but not quite as much so as we would have seen had this been a Reno Mage. Reno Mage is dedicated to answering threats in the early stages. Freeze Mage has cards that are dedicated to answering it enough of the time that the matchup isn't so bad for you. Yeah. So Doomsayer, a very critical card at this spot, being able to land an early Medivh's Valet or an early Mad Scientist, another critical points for him. If he finds those early tools, Control could be in trouble, but he doesn't have quite as many as some of the other Control Mage decks have. And when I say Control Mage deck in this spot, that's the, the function of Freeze Mage in this matchup. It is to uh, eliminate Control's resources and then rely on his endgame potential to carry him through. All right, I rate Control's hand pretty solid. It, it's fairly good. I, I, I think this is somewhat of an average hand where he opens up with the double Firefly. Uh, and Innervate would have made this hand spectacular. Sure. But right now he's operating on a fairly linear curve. So that being the case, it's not the start you want when, it, when all the marbles are in play right now. He wants to have those explosive moments where he absolutely dominates. All right, so if he takes the Flame Geyser here, that is just a free two damage removal that generates a 1-2 Elemental. The Elemental may not necessarily seem super important, but there are situations early on where you just having something on the board can potentially allow you, in conjunction with the Hero Power, to do something to the board. Counterspell could be played on the next turn. Shatter is realistically, for, for all intents and purposes, not on the screen. Yeah, the Counterspell, is, I think, is the most interesting one to me because if Jinja Ninja can squelch the board pressure and then land a Counterspell leading into what he anticipates being a Living Mana turn, that's a way to handle Living Mana quite efficiently. He, he has enough AoE in his deck that I don't think that's a major concern to him, but it certainly is a thought that is at least crossing his mind. All right, well, Flame Geyser is the pick, and it effectively just means Primordial Glyph was never in the deck. You just had a copy of Flame Geyser. You spent two mana, you... You basically paid full price for it, and that is one less minion on the board. Oh, you don't want to draw those. No. Okay, so at this point, I would personally just be committed to as much as possible clearing the board. I'm not trying to develop that ice block. Uh, I'm more thinking Forgotten Torch. Well, I, I do like Forgotten Torch, but the one thing it does is it puts a Roaring Torch in your deck. Sure. And Ginger Ninja needs to find card draw. He needs to find AoE. And Roaring Torch doesn't help. That actually works against that. And this way, he also gets the 1-2 on board. So Control does have uh, some concern by, to either taking this out or, or making a sacrifice here. Because Jinjinj is now set up to use Hero Power to take out this 1-2 Elemental. 
Yeah, yeah I'd forgotten about that flame elemental, but realistically, when you can actually play the 1-2 and develop it alongside removing a minion, that's incredibly powerful. Speaking of which, though, incredibly powerful, Echoing Ooze oh, with yeah. all these buffs. Mark of the Wild yeah. is certainly a good one. It'll have to wait. But Mark of the Lotus in the meantime, that is three power he's getting. The taunt's realistically not that relevant for you here against the Freeze Mage anyway. So just getting the power now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next turn, you have access to Ice Block Medivh's Valet. That's decent, but... Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious what the ordering on this one is. I, I think I like the Forgotten Torch more first. Just peels power from the board. But we're quickly approaching that Living Mana turn. And Jinja Ninja needs to find AoE or that Living Mana is going to be devastating. Five mana would have made this a particularly spicy turn, but on four mana, you get you get a little bit of spice. Wow, and Control's going to choose to use the Power of the Wild uh, right away over the Mark of the Wild. I, I'm a bit surprised by that because of its power with living mana. It does protect him from a Deez Valet, though, so th I, I think that's likely what was on the forefront of his mind. I mean, you start getting into the situation where, where you're thinking, okay, what... What goes wrong? What what is worst case scenario? Haunted and Creeper is that if if that was a Haunted Creeper, this is a great draw. Wow, Control just pulled very far ahead in this game. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. No, 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 that's that's a that's a worthwhile point there. Oh my! And look how nervous he is. He 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 can tell that he's ahead. He feels like he's so close. And Jinja Ninja is now about to have to expend resources in ways that he does not want to expend them. Yeah, Jinja Ninja was up 2-0 in this series. And this is now actually starting to look like it's going to be the reverse sweep for control just based on what we see of the board right and now. And we've been seeing the Agro Druids struggle the yeah. entire time. But it's, the point I made earlier, control actually got a reasonable draw on a lot of the Agro Druids we've seen haven't necessarily had intuitive hands. Yeah, he didn't necessarily get the lights out hand, but he got a pretty good one. The pan out worked very well for him. Okay, he's got the reload, too, from the living mana, should this board be dealt with, but with Haunted Creeper, Dragon Egg, both churning out minions when they're interacted with. I, I just, it's such an easy clear on the Blood Mage. He's pushing so much damage, and Ginger Ninja's hand is just... It's just trash right now. Second Ice Block's doing nothing. Ice Lance is gaining three health effectively in this spot. I mean, even Frostbolt, what, how much are you actually accomplishing here? That's a great question. Still no AoE. I don't even think he frost bolts here. I'm I'm not entirely sure. I mean, you're only taking one damage off the board, or two on the Galaga Crawler's case. Sure. That's just not a good deal. I think he's got to. He needs every point of life he can get. Oh my. <laughs> And look at control. He's thinking about this, going, you know what? It's got to be this. Well, you you hear power first. Well, he's got he's got two minions on board, so he's oh, got it's two sure, sure. It doesn't it doesn't take the mana. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Wow. If Ginger no. Ninja does not draw AOE. I think he's just dead. No block popped just yet, and oh. wow, Vault Kobold, one of the worst draws in that situation. And this is this is the <sighs> issue with Freeze Mage in these matchups is it does have tools to answer early on, but it is not dedicated to that purpose. That inconsistency is showing through this game. He drew no card draw. He didn't have Mad Scientist early. He drew both Ice Blocks. And we've seen how much the Reno Mage has absolutely hammered Agro Druid. I, th I think that's it. Like Even if he draws ways to clear after this, he's going to be at one life fighting to, to live. No card draw, no AoE, just sitting there on essentially no time. And this ice barrier is not going to matter. No, not at all. You know, all things considered, Control's draws are, are basically dead for the rest of the game. All that matters is what he's got right now. All right, the block going to be popped. 
Yeah, wise to slow himself down and take another look at that too. That was the sequence necessary to pop it one. Yeah. The the only silver lining here, and this is this is like so not silver at all, is just you have the second ice block, but these last few draws for Jinja Ninja. It's abysmal. It's some of the worst draws in his deck, turn after turn. Now granted, I mean, how many he's drawn, he has quite a few of them. It's but he, he never hit Acolyte of Pain, he never hit Arcane Intellect. It's about the early synergy. All right, block popped once again, and Control is knocking on the door. He is at the threshold saying, please, do not have something crazy in there that somehow turns us around. But I don't think there's a card in Hearthstone that turns this situation around. Uh, there is not. That, that's not a thing. Control, he's, he can't think of it either. You can see him. He's like, he's, I can't think of any way he gets out of the situation. How does he win from here? He's out of ice blocks. He can't heal himself. He has no cards left. He didn't clear my board. Even if he had Yogg in here, he doesn't have to cast that many spells. That's it. Control. The fist pump. He moves on to the live finals. Three games to two over Jinja Ninja. Repping the Fade to Karma shirt, the Fade to Karma coffee mug. Probably a Fade to Karma tattoo on his lower back. <laughs> but sans that one. Oh, and Jinja Ninja was so close. Uh, everything was going his way, too, and he felt like he, he was seeing the lines, he was making the correct plays, he brought the right decks, but is that Freeze Mage deck, and this is just purely opinion now, is that Freeze Mage deck simply worse than the Reno Mage overall for this tournament, or do you think he just didn't get the matchups he wanted? I think it, it boils down to just the, the slightly larger failure rate that it has in aggro matchups. Again, you have cards that are dedicated specifically to being enough of the time uh, there that you don't absolutely lose the match. The Reno mage decks are dedicated to absolutely wiping out that early pressure. And so while they can suffer from inconsistencies as well, they don't typically do it as often. Here, uh, it's, it's just an unfortunate sequence of events. I think it was played really well from both sides, but at the end of the day, those lacking those tools means that control moves on. All right, well, heartbreaker for Jinja Ninja, but we're going to have the opportunity now to talk to control just as soon as we get him over here. And Jinja Ninja... What a, what a story that had all the makings of being this feel-good thing you wanted to go through by the end there. You know, he, ah, he had done so much. But Control is back, and we are ready to interview him. Control, congratulations on the win, man. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm feeling insane, man. This is it's, it's crazy. Being down 2-0, I don't know, dude. Pirate Warrior is failing me, but uh, believed in the heart of the cards, and we got there, I guess. Yeah, what, what does this mean to you? Obviously, you are someone who styles yourself as kind of a wild expert. You know, do you feel like there's any added pressure to come in here and win? Oh, huge pressure, man. I mean, that's all, long, all month long, dude, in, in chat for Twitch. Basically, all I got was control. How are you going to do in the wild tournament, man? Am I going to see you win it? And um, the whole time for me, it was like, I mean, I don't think I'm really that good at the game. I play a lot, but um, just came up with a good lineup, and I guess I got there. But yeah, I definitely felt the pressure for sure. As you guys can see, I'm sure, I mean... I'm talking to myself the whole time. You can see me touching my face and stuff. Definitely, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely feeling the pressure for sure. But we got there. That's what matters. It's definitely one of the most important facets. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the format. Uh, not, there wasn't a ton of players who were actively seeking com competition within Wild. But when this tournament series was announced, you saw that quickly change. What sort of evolutions did you see leading up to this event? Uh, as far as the metagame goes? or uh, Metagame, deck list, tech choices, that sort of thing. Decklist evolved a little bit. It was really just Recruit Paladin recently. I think they changed a lot. And the Egg Druid deck that I was playing as well, Egg Druid was refined a little bit more. But I would say Recruit and anything Recruit Paladin were refined a lot from standard players, I'd say. And some wild ones as well. But that was one that popped up a lot. Otherwise, I mean, Pirate Warrior stayed the same. The list that I got Rank 1 Legend with is still used um, within a card. All that kind of stuff. Combo Priest was another big one as well. Although I wouldn't say it was really refined by standard players or anything. That's another one that was used a lot and popped up relatively recently. All right, well, at this point now, you have booked your passage. You are going to the July Live Finals. Obviously, you've been playing all day, but have you had an opportunity to see some of the other players you're going up against? I have not, no. I watched the games in Europe, actually, yeah. But, um, yeah, I watched the general. The 3-0, I was like, okay, pretty good. Um, kind of scared to face him, but uh, practice a lot, and hopefully I can get the W there as well. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you here in July for the Live Finals. Take it easy. Thank you very much. Look forward to being there. Catch you guys later. 
That was a series, man. I, I got to be honest. I, I, I would imagine Control obviously goes back and watches those VODs, and you, you got to see, you know, he sees that misplay. He's got to tighten up his play for sure if he's going to emerge victorious when it comes to the top eight. I, I think it's a it's a small thing to look at, but it definitely can make a large difference. It's, yeah. Again, that one momentary lapse can change the outcome of a tournament, and so those are important ones to eliminate when you've got everything else in order. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the bracket for the Americas. We kicked things off with Control taking on Mech Nuggets. Mech Nuggets was able to take it against Control, who then fell to the lower bracket, playing against Jinja Ninja, who beat out Silent Storm. I, I do want to point out this is a 2015 official Hearthstone tournament because Silent Storm was here with the Control <laughs> pre-stack. Love to see it. Sad to see him lose. Silent Storm is one of those players I actually really enjoy watching because he's He's the opposite of afraid to actually bring like really kind of like weird decks that are his own making, yeah. but yeah, it didn't work out for him here. Very known for uh, being experimental. He he was no fear in trying them. He he will put faith in them, and he has a game plan crafted specifically against what other players are doing. He relies on the fact that he has experience in that particular style of matchup to guide him through. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at these six players we now have attending the live finals from China. It is Shanghai Yu Yi, S H Royal Baze. From Europe, it is General and Alb987. And now, from the Americas, we have Mech Nuggets and Control. Let's go ahead and take a look at the schedule for the remainder of the day. We finished out two regions, but arguably, I'd say we kind of say the best for last. Asia Pacific, always a treat to watch. We're going to have two players coming up next. Uh, that is going to do it for us for the Americas region. We'll be a short break. We'll be right back with Asia Pacific.